Hello and hello everybody and welcome to the one more uh, Autometrics webinar. Uh, the topic today will be automated verification using Arico and Format target match. Today's presenter is Kaylin Berry from uh, she's product man product marketing and audiology manager at Phonak, and then we have Wendy Swatowski. She is uh, she works uh, she works with us in Autometrics and uh, doing audiology development and manager of audiology. I'm I am the moderator, uh, and my name is Mariana Rosling Jensen, and I work with education and training manager. So a little bit of the practical of the webinar and a little bit uh, tips and tricks. All participants are muted to reduce background noise. But if you wanna, if you have questions or you wanna write to us, there is a question box in the right side of your screen. There you can write questions, and I will get them. The questions will be answered in the end of the of the presentation. If we get too many questions and we can't get through all the questions, I will collect the questions and send you the answers afterwards. The webinar is being recorded, so if you want to see some parts of it, later on again you will get a link with the recorded version of this webinar. If you have any problem, technical problems and you need some support, you are welcome. To, to write to me, directly to me, or in the, question, uh, in the question box, and I will be able to see what you are saying. Wendy, welcome both of you to our <laughs> webinar, and uh, now I will give you the screen to you. Thank you. Can everyone see my slide, Mariana? Can yes, you are fine. Oh, yes. You are fine. Thank you for coming to our webinar today. I'm Wendy Sapolsky, as Mariana said, and I work in the U.S. mostly with our customers, primarily for fitting, for training and support, as well as collaborate with partners like Phonak. And I'm Kaylin Berry. I'm an audiologist. I work on our internal audiology team here at Phonak U.S. Um, my team undertakes a lot of the educational endeavors that we do here in order to educate not only our own team, our trainers and sales team, uh, but also our customers. So we do a lot of these collaborations and talks um, and are very happy that we can bring you this information today. So if we look at the next slide, we can really get into the agenda here. So we'll review what we know about probe mic measures um, and the value of them, as well as look at Oracle and Target Match and how those are working together in order to make this process a little bit more efficient. And then we'll walk through what that process looks like so it's a little more familiar once you decide to try it in your clinic. And then, of course, we'll look at the evidence behind target match um, so that we can look at just how much we tested this to make sure that it was accurate once it reached you in your office. So jumping right in, if we look at um, some of the research that we have, I know that a, a lot of us know that there is a really high value when it comes to pro mic measures. Um, but I like to review some of the research that's out there so that we can all feel really good about the time that we spend with each fitting um, doing pro mic measures. So we have to consider the research that's out there that tells us that unaided threshold sensitivity is not necessarily a great predictor of hearing aid success. Now, that's not to say that unaided threshold sensitivity is not important. It, of course, is a very important piece of our test battery, but there is more testing to be done in order to predict how these patients are going to do once we fit them with hearing aids. And for example, if we look at the next slide, um, this is a collection of data by Dr. Pamela Souza, looking specifically at the mild to moderate hearing loss population compared to the moderately severe to severe hearing loss population. On the left, we see performance, so pure tone average on the x-axis, and then on the y-axis, you'll see Quixin performance. And the blue dots are mild to moderate patients. And those folks you can see cluster a little bit more nicely um, with really good performances at poor signal to noise ratios. Whereas our red dots are our moderately severe to severe population. And we can see that this is much less of a homogeneous population. When we start putting them in noise, 
um, even with identical peer tone averages or very similar peer tone averages, they tend to spread out quite a bit. Some of them performing around 2 dB signal to noise ratio, which is quite good, and others up towards 25 dB signal to noise ratio, which is quite poor. On the right, even if we look at their performance in quiet, so a typical NU6 word score, our blue dots, again, that mild to moderate population, clustered very nicely between 80 to 100 percent. They do quite well on this task in quiet. But our moderately severe to severe population, they, again, are scattered across this graph, um, some of them doing as poorly as 12 to 15 percent correct, while, as, while others are up towards 100 percent. So we can't necessarily assume their performance based on their performance um, or their recognition of thresholds in quiet. Um, we also have to consider the performance of hearing aids as well and how those differ across manufacturers. So if we look at this next slide, so not only are we seeing big differences between individuals individual patients um, with similar audiograms, we also see huge differences when we look at a first fit or an out-of-the-box fitting. Um, so this data shows at zero you see NL2 targets, and then we're looking at the uh, deviation from those targets across five different hearing instrument manufacturers' instruments. And we see that even with input level, we differ greatly. Some of them over amplify quite a bit, many of them under amplify quite a bit, which has been um, what we have kind of come to expect from a, a first fit is that it's quite under amplified compared to target. Um, however, if we do our due diligence to measure and do some probe mic measures, we can see that this absolutely does get better. So we see that variation with an out-of-the-box fitting, which is why we should really take the time to individualize a fitting. It becomes very important um, to know what it is we're putting in that ear. And here we can see with our first fit, those are the yellow bars. And then once we've done some programming, which are the red bars, um, once we've done programming, we see that the performance of the patient becomes much better. And here on this graph, lower is better. So this looked at all six top six hearing instrument manufacturers, as well as an analog instrument, which is very interesting that they were able to, upon programming, able to increase performance with a simple analog instrument as well as some of the top instruments that are out on the market um, at the time of this study in 2012. Um, so it really does get much better in terms of patient performance when we take the time to do some measurements and some extra programming so that we are fully aware of what we're delivering to this patient. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to Wendy so she can go through a little bit more of the value of probe measures. Thank you, Kaylin. We know that um, following that sort of programming, we do see benefits to signal-to-noise ratio uh, performance. Um, and we also know that REM is shown to be good for patient satisfaction. In fact, in the Market Track 8 study, we saw that realer measures were one of the key differentiators, the use of realer measures were one of the key differentiators between patients that were highly satisfied and those that were very unsatisfied with their hearing instruments. And what the study looked at was weighting the different steps. It's not simply about completing more steps, but about the specific steps selected. And REM was certainly very important to that process. The benefits also cross into clinic efficiency and productivity. When combining verification and validation, the average number of visits in the first year of following obtaining hearing instruments was 2.4. And this is contrasted with 3.6 visits when uh, neither were used. So um, an improvement or fewer, 1.2 fewer visits from using verification and validation, which is much more efficient for the clinic, the provider, and also for the patient. And finally, just to sum all that up, we have a new study, a, um, a new WER study from um, Amlani et al. And they looked at patient perceptions of their fitting, of their instruments, with and without real ear. And this was done, it was an interesting study done with new users, experienced users, and then in the drawer non-users who were refit uh, with REM. And they found positive 
effects for emotional value, which correlates to acceptance and adoption of hearing instruments, for quality value, which ties to the service excellence and the product view, behavioral intent, which helps decide, patients decide whether they'll repurchase hearing instruments, and also willingness to pay for audiologic services related to the fitting of the instruments. So there are many really or PMM effects for the patient's success and satisfaction, for efficient practice, for value perception. Um, we know that these things are, are prevalent throughout the fitting process, these benefits. And that's really the foundation for this initiative or this fitting tool. Both Phonak and Odometrics are committed to giving access to these benefits for clinicians and their patients. We wanted to close that gap between all of the great benefits of pro microphone measures by adding efficiency to complement that value. One approach to do that is to combine multiple steps and platforms into a single process, which is what you'll see in Target Match. There is the opportunity to do that through what's called IMC, um, Intermodule Communication, which operates within the NOAA environment. And this allows fitting and verification software platforms to exchange data and device control. That's now evolved into IMC2, which is the new HIMSA standard. However, beyond IMC, collaboration and partnerships like Target Match between Phonic and Odometrics have brought even more value by combining experts in fitting along with experts in fitting instrumentation and blending that knowledge. And that brings us to Target Match. What is it? Target Match is a fully integrated and automated verification system. It's a seamless uh, and it operates through Phonak Target and uh, the Oracle system. It's seamless and it offers a step-by-step -step workflow to guide hearing care providers through the verification process. It also measures specific real ear data such as the REUG, the real ear um, unaided gain, the real ear occluded gain, a real ear RECD, and a microphone location effect that is generally not measured even when doing traditional real ear measures and it applies that into a highly customized fitting. It then provides an automated process to match to the targets. This was actually launched for the first time in Phoniac Target 4.3 in 2016, um, but there is even a newer iteration that we'll talk about uh, in a few minutes. Target Match is designed to operate with Oracle, and Oracle is a modular and complete fitting system that includes a variety of tools such as fitting video otoscopy, audiometry, but specifically for Target Match, probe microphone measurements, and hearing instrument test chamber measurements. Oracle offers a wide range of options for prescriptive fitting and special feature verification, but it operates, um, maybe most importantly, on the Otosuite platform. And that integrates it within NOAA, which makes it ideal for this sort of blended um, collaborative effort with Target Match. What you need for Target Match, um, just a few preliminaries, is you need Phonak Target 5.1. The newest release version is of Target is 5.1.1 with a build uh, seen on the screen there. You need an Odometrics Oracle FreeFit or Oracle HIT with Otosuite 4.81, although our newest released Otosuite version is 4.82. You do need a specific NOAA build for NOAA 3 or NOAA 4. You see that there and some notes about how you can check your version for when you want to use Target Match. In both Autosuite and in Target, you'll go to the Help About section, which will tell you your version. A few additional considerations. Your Oracle system must have its annual calibration completed in order to run Target Match. Also, Target Match is run through Target software, so Autosuite actually must remain closed. So if you have Autosuite open, you need to close that in order to have access to Target Match. And also, just a note, while the software versions that are listed here are supported, the most current version is definitely preferred, just to make sure that you have access to all of the newest features and have a, the smoothest experience. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Kaylin to talk to you about the specifics. Wonderful. So we'll look at how this, what this process looks like so it feels a little more familiar to you. Once you have all of the necessary equipment and software that Wendy just mentioned, um, Target Match will actually become an available tab within your software. If you see my screenshot here on the screen, it's towards the bottom in your global tuning tab within your Target fitting software. 
down on the bottom second from the left. Um, so again, you have to have all the proper equipment and software installed, plugged in, and turned on in order for that to appear. You don't have to activate it at all within your fitting software. It just becomes available. So once you click on that and, and press start, then you'll be given a couple of options. Again, we're able to do real ear measures, so on-ear measures or test box measures, and we'll talk about the test box measures in a little while. And then you'll want to make a selection as to whether you're going to measure an on-ear RECD, or if you've already measured one, you can select to enter those values, as you typically have been able to do within target software. On this screen, you'll also see at the lower left-hand corner, you'll see your percent to target gain, as well as your fitting formula that you have selected within your target software. And it should be noted that one of the great features of target match is that you can fit to any prescriptive formula that's available within target software. So whether that be any of the NAL iterations or DSL or Adaptive Phonak Digital. And Adaptive Phonak Digital, which is our proprietary algorithm, has not been able to be verified because it's not available within uh, real air systems outside of target software. So because we're doing this collaboration with Odometrics, you can now for the very first time appropriately verify Adaptive Phonak Digital. Previously, what you may have been doing, if you, were, if you fit your hearing aids to the default setting, then Adaptive Phonak Digital was used, and then you may have been verifying to a different target, say NAL. Um, which means you were comparing kind of apples and oranges. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do it because it still gives you a good idea of what's happening in that ear canal. But it's hard to fit to a target when the target's going to be much different than the fitting formula you're using. If you find on that screen uh, that you do not have the target gain or the fitting formula that you would like to have selected, then if we look at the next slide, you can see where you would change those and they're found within your global tuning tab. To the left, towards the top of the screen, you'll see a fitting formula and a drop-down menu. That's where you'll find all of your options um, with the addition of some of the tonal options that we now have available for NAL and DSL. Uh, and then in the middle, towards the bottom half of the screen, you'll see gain level. And Target Match does allow you to verify two different gain levels from 70% all the way up to 100% to target gain. So once you've made those selections, you can move on. And one of the first options you'll have is to do a guided probe tube placement. And this is a great feature. We've all had those moments where we're sort of blindly inserting a probe tube and maybe our patient sort of jumps out of their skin because we bumped up against their eardrum, um, which is not necessarily the most comfortable sensation. I'm sure we've all felt it at one point. Um, so what this will do is it will use sound in order to estimate the amount of distance left between the probe tube and the eardrum. And we use that based on a, a probability distribution. We estimate that distance um, that we know based upon known ear canal distance. So you need to make sure that you're not obstructing that reference microphone and that you're not standing between the patient or the oracle speaker. Once you hit start, which you can actually do by pressing the button, the on-off button on the collar of your oracle free fit, it will begin that process. And we actually will take a look at the next slide and then we'll show a little video. So what will happen is it will give you a millimeter countdown. Here it says seven, so you have seven millimeters left to go before you get to that correct position. And if you click one more time, Wendy, once you get to that correct position, you'll see that green check mark. If you see an orange exclamation point, it may mean that you're not far enough in the ear canal for a proper measurement to be taken, so keep inserting it smoothly, or you can always um, remove it and then try and insert it again, making sure that you're not obstructing that sound field or the reference microphone. So let's take a look at the video that we have to show this process in action. Thank you, Kayla. Of course. Cool. Dan has recorded a fitting, and we wanted to show these stages to you along the way. So once we've connected to our instruments um, what and entered target match, what you saw very briefly was 
that photo suite was actually called by target match so you'll see a little uh, blurb that shows photo suite and then it hides it runs under the hood following that you receive a prompt to do probe tube calibration which is just to ensure um, with all verification systems prior to a fitting that everything is adequate with your tube probe tubes and that your system is working and you run a quick probe tube calibration and then close it once it's successful now guidance is given on screen along the way prior to each step and this is both for the clinician and also for the client so you can remind your client that they need to be seated quietly um, and uh, face the speaker the guided probe tube placement is an option. So if you choose not to use the guided probe tube placement, you can actually skip the step. But it's a great tool not only for patient comfort, as Kaylin mentioned, but also for, ac for accuracy. We need to be five millimeters from the TM in order to have accurate real air measurements, and we wanted to provide a tool that could really make sh help you make sure that you were there. So in this case, the clinician places the probe tube hit start or presses the neck button on the back of the neck loop and following an ambient noise measurement a reading is made of the distance and if the distance is too far you can thread that probe tube slightly further down the canal until the green check mark is obtained and then we measure an RUG once we know the probe tube is in place has a nice little please be quiet for your patient as well and then you do the same with the other ear so in this case, we see that first an ambient noise measurement is made. If I stopped it right here, we would see that we need 10 millimeters further for um, proper placement. And the probe tubes that come with the Oracle actually have millimeter markings on them so that you can watch them enter the outer portion of the ear canal and know approximately when you've received more than 10. And once you're there, you get a green check mark and the RUG will be measured for this year as well. And now with that, we've, we know that our probe tubes are placed appropriately and we've also measured one of the first acoustic transforms that Target Match will be using to customize the fitting. Give this back to Kaylin now to go into the next step. Wonderful. Uh, and it should be noted that the guided probe tube placement is meant to be used for patients ages 10 and up. It's not necessarily made for a pediatric patient. Um, we can assume that patients by the age of 10 have more or less an adult-sized ear canal. Um, it very rarely does not work. Um, and in those cases, you can utilize that RUG that runs to look for that valley between 4 and 8K to disappear as a, another tool to make sure that you're in the right spot. But as Wendy mentioned, that first acoustical transform is measured, that REUG, and then you'll move on uh, and measure the RECD, REOG, and MLE. And as Wendy mentioned earlier, these are incredibly important measurements to individualize, and they are often estimated when we do fittings, even when we do real air measures with other systems. So the fact that they are measured to this individual during your fitting is really going to improve that first fit and ultimately improve that patient experience um, and give them so much more than an out-of-the-box fitting that only you as a, a qualified provider can offer them. And this is also one of the foundations of Adaptive Phonak Digital, which we will talk about in just a moment, um, but I believe we have another video to show some of these transforms being measured. So once we've measured our RUG and placed our probe tube, we have an on-screen prompt to insert the hearing aids and mute them. They are actually already muted because they're connected. And then you are prompted to press continue in the system. You are given this feedback throughout, so if it, the process is new for you, you can feel comfortable just following the on-screen prompt. An ambient noise measurement is first done. And that is done because we are using low-level inputs because we are interested in the soft input, um, soft gain, soft input levels for the instrument. So knowing that we have uh, a variety of fitting environments that we operate in, the ambient noise measure is a quality control. Um, I paused that; it doesn't take that long, but I paused the video to share that with you. So it does an ambient noise measurement, and then you can see the circles at the top that it's sequentially running the REOG 
a real or could have been, the microphone location effect, or MLE, and the real ear RECD for this patient. And once that's complete, I will show you what your outcome looks like. The final step is the RECD real ear measurement. Now, what you see is that you have exclamation marks by the RECD and check marks by the REOG and MLE. The check marks mean that everything was performed as expected and the, the measurement was, was completed. The exclamation mark does not mean that it wasn't completed. It actually was completed also. But it just means that there are some details you may want to take a look at. Because we're using low-level inputs and we want a really quiet environment, often you'll click that details button and see that the, there is a slight difference between the predicted and the corrected measurement that Target Match is using. The differences are minimal, a couple of dB, and they're often below 250 hertz just due to ambient, ambient noise. So um, you're able to look at that but still move forward with confidence. As you move on through this process, you can then select how you want your responses to be measured and then adjusted. And you have a few options here depending on how much control you would like to have over this fitting. Um, you can choose automatic match, which means everything's going to be measured and then gain will be adjusted automatically to meet the targets that you are working with. Manual match will apply your acoustic transformation measurements but then response measurements will be taken and you manually adjust gain to meet the targets if you wish to have a little bit more control. And then measure responses only is just that. It's going to measure all of the transformations and the responses, but only any manual changes that you make will be saved to that fitting. It will save the curves in NOAA, um, but will not apply them to the fitting unless you make a manual change. You can also choose your active program while you are making adjustments. Typically, you'll choose the startup program or comm situations, which is um, the startup in this case. But if you were doing some troubleshooting with a patient, say working with a speech and noise program and they were making some claims about what they experienced, then you could select speech and noise as the active program and make any changes that you saw necessary. We move on to the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about adaptive phonak digital and why this is an important um, fitting algorithm to utilize during fittings. Because adaptive phonak digital will take into account these individualized acoustic transformations, the MLE, RECD, and REUG. It will be selected by default within your fitting, unless you are, of course, fitting a child, in which case it will select DSL, or if you're importing settings from another fitting in which you've chosen a different fitting formula. And again, these transformation measures can be obtained through an individual measurement or an estimation. Through target match, you're going to have an individual measurement, which is going to do a lot more good for your fitting and make it um, much more specific to that patient that you're working with. So this idea of adaptive phonic digital, if we think of our hearing aid fitting as a house, and the 2CC coupler measures that we do at our headquarters in order to make sure that our technology is delivering exactly what it needs to deliver before it gets to you and your patients, that forms the foundation of the house. However, the individual calibrations that you do, once you have those instruments in your hand and are fitting them to a patient, um, those form the first floor of that house and are incredibly crucial to creating a good fitting. We have to customize the house in order to individualize the fitting to the patient's needs. The RECD in particular can be variable from patient to patient, even as much as 15 decibels. So it's really important to take that measurement and really um, specifically apply it to your fitting. And this will be estimated regardless of whether you're using target match, but it will be a much more individualized measurement with target match. Some of the other foundations of adaptive phonic digital, we would like to match loudness function to a normal hearing loudness function, and gain and compression settings are going to be somewhat based on a hearing loss configuration. 
Um, and if we look at the next slide, we can see some of those hearing loss configurations lined up next to one another. Um, for example, if we look at a mild versus a moderate, maybe a ski slope, reverse slope, or a severe to profound fitting, we're going to need different um, parameters in order to meet the needs of those very specific patients. For example, with a mild patient, we may need more emphasis of soft and moderate high frequency signals, whereas a severe to profound patient, we want to make sure we're channeling energy into a range um, that it's going to be utilized as opposed to a range where we can suppose auditory function may be lacking. There is a lot of clinical evidence supporting the use of adaptive phonak digital. Um, we took over 200 hearing aid fittings across six different countries and compared the pre-calculations to the fine-tuning at one to two follow-up visits. And on average with these patients, the fine-tuning was about 2 dB different than the pre-calculation in the speech range. So there wasn't a lot of fine-tuning that needed to be done. Um, and then if we consider the difficulties of balancing background comfort and then looked at um, preference for sufficient gain for high frequency speech understanding, 87% of the participants in those studies expressed complete acceptance of the gain settings when it came to high frequency speech understanding, and 95% accepted the low frequency um, range of sounds that was being delivered. So highly preferred by patients um, and well performing and including those individualized measurements. And if we look at the next slide, then we can see once our measurements are being taken, this is the screen that you'll see and we can watch a video to see how it looks in action. Thank you. Jumped ahead there. So, once we're ready and we've chosen our fitting target, <clears throat> here as Kaylin described, I've sped this up slightly for the presentation, but it's still a very fast process. Those transfer functions are applied. Now what you see on screen here is you see the dashed line, which is the individualized target for the patient based on the selected gain. Maybe you want them fit at 90% gain or 80% for a new user. And also on the measured feedback thresholds. The thin solid line you see is the non-individualized target. And then as we run, we're going to measure ambient noise and present the International Speech Test Signal, or ISTS, at 50, 65, and 80. So as that's running, you can see in the left ear there's some variance, actually in the right ear as well, between the green line and the dashed line, which is the individualized target. So this first run is a measurement without the automated verification being applied. But it does in, in take into account the ear canal acoustic transformations, which is why it's already closer than you might expect for an out-of-the-box fitting. Once that's done, the calculations are done under the hood to provide the optimal fitting levels, and you will see those curves run next. So these are the post-automated verification, uh, after the automated verification changes are applied. And now you'll see 50, 65, and 80. That our outcome will be within a couple of dB of the dash line, if not right on the dash line for 50, 65, and 80. So during this time, what I've done is verified my fitting and obtained my settings, my desired settings for this patient. And then I have successful measurements obtained you'll see that, again, we have an exclamation mark. For the left ear at 50 dB, there may be some slight ambient, a uh, little bit of ambient noise when that was running for that, for that patient, but if you were to click on the details, you'd see that it's minimal and usually, like I say, below 250 hertz. So once you've done that, you have a choice to make of measuring again or saving those settings into NOAA, into Otisuite, and into Target. Fantastic. So if you move on to the next slide, so then the question becomes, of course, how reliable is this? And I always tell people, don't just take my word for it. Always look at what the data says and, and the research that's behind it. Um, we saw some beautiful curves there that matched up to targets really nicely. But of course, our, we're our own worst critics here at Phonex, so we always want to ask the question, 
how reliable is this going to be if we test and retest? And of course, how accurate is it um, across patients? So we did take 10 hearing impaired individuals with bilateral moderate to severe hearing loss, fit them with Bolero V70s, and we really wanted to take a look at um, a manual fit versus a target match. And we can look at the next slide here to see what we looked at in this study. So manual fit, meaning a non-integrated workflow. So this would be your typical open up your fitting software to hook up your hearing aids, open up your software for your real ear system, run your response curves on your real ear system, switch over to your fitting software to manually make changes uh, and, and go back and forth that way until you're pleased with the result and you've met target um, within however many dB you deem acceptable. Um, so here we see some results of this target match versus a manual fit type process. And we have, again, we're looking at the deviation from target. So the green line is target match, whereas the red line is that manual fit process. And we can see that the green line was well matched to targets within three decibels all the way out to 4,000 hertz. We see some pretty large discrepancies with the manual fitting, particularly in those higher frequencies, um, as well as um, where we might see some ear canal resonance in those mid frequencies. So a much better, more reliable match to target when you're using target match. And if we look at test retest reliability, we also had um, some very good results there and results were within two decibels for frequencies up to 4,000 hertz, even using an ear mold versus a power dome versus an open dome, we saw this test retest reliability. So incredibly important to look at uh, how that performs in a more research-based environment, and we can see that it's accurate and reliable. And furthermore, um, the wonderful researcher that did that for us uh, went so far as to say that target match, the integrated guided workflow outperforms traditional non-integrated REM fittings in terms of target matching and test retest reliability. So this is a really important collaboration for both Otometrics and Phonic to ultimately increase that patient experience. And we've already um, come to the second generation of it because we're constantly working to make it better, um, specifically for you, the provider. So we want to make sure we're doing everything we can to meet your needs in the clinic. And that means that we've released another version of it with our most recent software update, Target 5.1, and it includes a 2CC test box workflow. Sometimes you may want to use a test box as opposed to on-ear measures. Maybe you have a population, um, maybe your patient is part of a population that maybe can't give you the feedback that you need, can't control their head positioning or body positioning in order to appropriately sit in front of that um, oracle speaker. Maybe there's too much environmental noise for you to perform an on-ear measure. Um, there's all sorts of reasons maybe making adjustments uh, in the absence of a patient's presence if we want to perform some sort of verification, but we don't have the ability to have that patient in our office in order to do on-ear measures. So there are lots of, lots of reasons to use a test box. It ultimately allows us to reach a wider client base. So if we look at both of these in summary on the next slide, we see that our on-ear measure function really gives us the ability to fully integrate this workflow and hopefully make it more efficient. I know that time is often an argument with doing real air measures. So we don't have enough time within our fitting, um, our fitting appointments. And it allows you to automatically match without having the headache of making sure you've run every test you need to run or um, switching back and forth between softwares to um, meet target. You can automatically match and be rest, rest assured that it is accurate and precise. And then of course with that 2CC test box really allowing us to reach a wider range of patients to verify and make sure we're providing them with the best possible care that, that we can. Um, which really leads me into thanking all of you for listening to our presentation. This is really something that both Otometrics and Phonak, we here at Phonak have been very passionate
excited about. Um, ultimately, it's a collaborative our intention. And I will kind of open the floor for Wendy if she wanted to tie up anything as well. But thank you all for listening. I thank you as well, and I'll click it back to Mariana and see if we had questions. I know we ran a little over, so thank you for your participation. Thank you, Kaylin and Wendy, for this really good presentation of uh, the new tool. It's very exciting, and I, as I used to say, there's no there's no excuse not to do verification anymore because I really think it made easier for the provider to 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 do verification to perform verification. So thank you for your good presentation. We are a little bit over time. I have one question or two questions. Uh, one question is, perhaps, do we have only this uh, with Phonak, Wendy? Can we only do this kind of things with Phonak? We do have, we are now IMC2 certified. Oracle is now IMC2 certified and Autosuite. Um, we also have, Resound has a, an integration called AutoREM, um, and Beltone has a, a similar AutoREM function as well does not have um, all of the ear canal acoustic transforms, but it also has an integration that you may want to explore. And if you um, reach out to your reps, they can actually put you in touch with support documents on that as well. And uh, one, question, one question for Kaylin. How is calibration method handled with open fit? So it runs in the open fit mode automatically, I believe. Um, and the calibration, the probe tube calibration is done through Otosuite. So it will run with Otosuite's calibration parameters. Is that correct, Wendy? That is correct. And it does default to an open or stored calibration process where the chirp is run when the hearing aids are muted. And actually, that's a step where automated verification, I think, is even more helpful. Even when I'm running verification all the time, I may occasionally forget to mute the hearing aids or something. So because the systems are communicating, the hearing aids are always muted when the chirp calibration is run, and it's run at various stages throughout the target match process, and then the hearing aids are turned back on prior to presentation of the stimulus. So it uses a stored calibration or for open fitting. Uh, and then there is one person saying, thank you for a wonderful presentation. It's, is it possible to run a measurement for selected input level and not for 50, 65, and 80? Kaylin, do you know when you do manual match, can you choose your input level? I don't believe you can. I think we ma we match it to the gain um, categories that you have within target software. I'll have to double check, but I believe that we are relegated to those input levels at this point in time. I think Whether or not that changes in the future, I'm unsure. I think you are completely right about that. <laughs> Sorry, Kaylin. You can yeah. And you can, however, open Autosuite and run additional, um, after your fitting, you can run Autosuite and run additional levels. You can verify MPO. You can look at sound recover, other features like that. Um, you would not have the adaptive digital targets in Autosuite, but you could at least look at input levels, at different input levels as well to supplement your target match fitting. And the last questions, because I think we should end it. The ICD that you measure, what's the difference from measuring the ICD the way you do or using a verification system? Kaylin, do you have information on the open ear RE, or in the um, real ear RECD measurement and how it differs, or is that something we should send out? It, that's something we may want to look into. Um, I don't have all the details on exactly how it's run. Okay, okay. So then I will say thank you for both of you. Any of you have a uh, uh, last comment. I know Wendy has one. I do. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I want to thank everybody. This is. I want to thank Kaylin and, and Phonak and you, Mariana. Um, this is a, a great collaboration, and we're excited to put this in your hands. Um, Mariana, did I have another comment? <laughs> yeah, you did. You want to tell everybody that you are going to send the hands out. And, oh, and I thought I did that earlier. Yes, we will be sending oh, you the presentation. Oh, it's because it was here. I couldn't hear. That's oh, okay. my problem. So we're going just in follow-up, we'll send you the presentation as well as the desktop fitting guide, and we'll include the answer to the question that um, for everybody so um, that we weren't able to answer uh, those two questions. We'll just clarify and make sure that information is in there as well. So, Thank you. Sorry, I, I was cut at a, a certain point. 
so I might uh, have to put that. Sorry for that. Uh, thank you both. And uh, keeping to, for everybody that has been with us for so long, uh, we had a lot of attendees today. Keep on looking for the program. We will have uh, more webinars and uh, the next month. Thank you. Thank you so much.